So how can we conserve land and natural habitats for the future? Let's look at the history of the conservation movement and also national parks. When the colonists first came to North America, they encountered a vast land with vast resources. But with relatively few people settling the land at that time, they made little effort to manage land and resources well. The mentality was that there was ample land and resources, and when these were degraded, you could just move on to new land or streams and resources. Um, Jared Elliott, a prominent minister, doctor, and farmer at the time said it this way, when our forefathers settled here, they entered a land which probably never had been plowed since the creation. The land being new, they depended upon the natural fertility of the ground, which served their purpose very well. And when they had worn out one piece, they cleared another without any concern to amend their land. By the 1850s, people began worrying about soil conservation, erosion, and cropland productivity. The United States was approaching a population of 25 million people and becoming more urbanized. Agricultural practices were wasteful, inefficient, and unsustainable. The impacts of soil erosion and infertility, which led to decreasing crop yields and natural barriers, led to an organized effort to understand the causes of these problems, and they began to build government institutions to promote better use of the land and its resources. In the 1830s, at about the same time as the conservation movement, the transcendental movement gained steam. This movement had very deep connections with the natural world, in addition to its ideals of reflective living and less conforming to religious and societal pressures, and a lean more towards making connections between the natural world and spiritualism. Ralph Waldo Emerson was the leader of the Transcendental Movement. He wrote the essay, Nature, in 1836, which reminded us that our existence is dependent on the natural world and that when we mismanage it, it, it is at our own peril. Other authors such as Henry David Thoreau and Walt Whitman were also major contributors to the movement and they advocated for the inherent values in the natural world. John Muir, who was the father of the Sierra Club, was instrumental in translating the ideals of the transcendental movement into public policy. When Theodore Roosevelt visited California in 1903 as part of a campaign visit, he sought out John Muir, who was a well-known guide in the Yosemite area at this time. John Muir took Roosevelt camping in the backcountry areas of Yosemite for a number of days, as shown in this picture, all the while bending his ear about the importance of preserving natural spaces. President Roosevelt was sold on the importance of natural lands. As a result, he became known as the conservation president and he established 50 wildlife refuges and 150 national forests. Overall, many scientific and environmental agencies as well as nonprofit groups were formed at this time and many more have been inspired by this early work. The list of agencies and conservation groups on this slide um, was established in the United States in the late 1800s and early 1900s and includes resources such as the Department of the Interior and Agriculture, the U.S. Forest Service, the U.S. Geological Survey, um, and the U National Park Service. Many of these are referenced throughout this course. Some conservation societies that were created during this time include the Audubon Society, the Sierra Club, and the National Wildlife Federation. By some counts, there are more than 6,000 national parks around the world. These are instrumental for preserving natural lands, and they often highlight unique geologic features or microbiomes. So how did they get started? First, the land around what is now Yosemite National Park in California was turned over to the state of California for management and conservation. Then, in 1872, Yellowstone National Park, based in the beautiful state of Wyoming, was set aside as the first national park. Across the world, other parks were formed, 
including the Royal National Park in Australia in 1879, um, followed by Banff National Park in Canada in 1885, and then many, many more national parks have been established across many countries. I did want to highlight the world's largest national park, which is the Northeast Greenland National Park. This was established by the Danish government in 1974. So now thousands of parks exist across the world in more than 100 different countries.